my path is straight ahead the spectrum up sound you know my sound is major i know you like the lyrics kid so just do me your favor tell the tech to turn my dad up this is a pack up hey you don't back up because i want to dive in and swim in the mentals where your thoughts roam i want to make it on my home before you never be alone but when you hear my song sing along with the rhythm cause i got things in that piece that i get from yes it's the end and i'm checking out the blonde one maybe i can have one maybe i can hunt one chill i'm one with god brothers it's hard to stay straight until you're scared straight and then you can't wait Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio with Tom and the Monkey Crew tonight. We have LFE, Greg, and Stephanie here tonight. Yay! And, uh, yay. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have uh, Greg and Stephanie pop in and for a show here and there. It's uh, good to see them around. I like their energy. So uh, We are recording this on October 8th of 2015. And, uh, man, weather's changing, guys. Yeah. And fall is actually starting to fall. You know, we're finally getting past the. Uh, we've had a. We've had. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it an Indian summer. Would you call this an Indian I, summer? What we've had here. I yeah. call it a summer with an Indian summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had a really, really long summer here, and I think that's kind of a, a trend going, especially on the western part of the U.S., uh, the continental U.S. Uh, yeah. North America. It's uh, been pretty dry. Uh, it's actually been kind of, I mean, on one hand, it's been really nice. The weather's been gorgeous. Yeah, we haven't had a summer in a while. We are in Washington State, so, you know, we're not really strapped with water um, like uh, a lot of the other places here on the West Coast. But uh, uh, I've definitely enjoyed the, the uh, nice, nice sunny days, and it's been, it's been uh, uh, one of those gorgeous falls here. I like that 70 degrees and mm-hmm. sunny skies. Yeah. And Rain in the morning, sunny in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good Pacific Northwest stuff. So anyways, guys, we have got a special treat for you tonight. They're always special treats, though, aren't we? Every, I, every night. that every yeah. week. Yeah, I think so. A special treat. But they're all special, Just, right? They're all special, <laughs> I guess, yeah. We we we're bringing Franco Di Nicola back with us, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go off. I think we we talked the uh, first couple of shows was mainly on soul and soul, soul growth and spirit, and and then we we kind of focused in on the ET uh, influences in the in the last show, and and I think this show we're gonna go into some of those communications that happen, uh, that channeling stuff or whatever we want to call it. Um, I, you know, I don't, I, I almost think that's not a really good word for it anymore. Uh, I mean, with with the experience that I've had with that stuff, I don't know if that's really a great word for it, but uh, for lack of a better term. Yeah, for now. Yeah, for yeah. now, yeah. yeah. So, Franco Di Nicola, well, welcome back to the 100 Monkey Radio. <laughs> Thank you. That's uh, quite a welcome there. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you Thank you yeah, for excited to have you. Yeah, well, I'm excited to be on the show, actually, myself. So you guys have a lot of fun to play with and uh, great energy, and I'm always uh, pleased to to come on and play with you guys and do whatever comes up, you know, in regards to whatever topics. And, you know, listen, we're we're here to, to, uh, to stretch uh, our imagination and to go outside of our boxes, so that's what we're here to do. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so Franco... Let's let's just jump right in with both feet. What is channeling? Well, channeling is it's, there's different ways of looking at it, but let's look at it, uh, the most popular way that people understand. You go, you can connect with an altered state of yours, and you can channel. What we can do is connect to a consciousness that is most likely in non-form that you can connect to, and they will communicate to a recipient of some sort. Now, the recipient can be someone that's calling it forth or somebody that is just basically ready to have a, a level of communication. Now, the channeling thing is a dicey thing at some, time, at some points because, in essence, unless you have a real good way to feel uh, you know, the intent and the energy that's coming through and you have a good grounding of yourself, of a, of a knowledge, you can kind of channel anything because you can channel something from a different universe. You can channel uh, a being uh, coming from from another planet, or you can uh, even a consciousness that is an old consciousness, like going into an archive and 
and watching an oldie show of the Andy Griffin show or something like that, right? So you'd be able to, because everything is still current, you know, it's all pockets of consciousness and memories and, and so forth. But you can channel entities, you can channel beings, you can channel, like for example, some of the people uh, channel a version of themselves in a different uh, timeline or say the highest probability of, say, an advanced time of say three, four hundred years from now or something of that nature. <clears throat> the interesting thing about that is a lot of times people channel uh, archangels or they're, uh, they're channeling um, other guides of some sort, depending. And a lot of times it's just other entities or energies uh, or consciousness that is working closely with the planet and working closely with this, uh, you know, the groups that are moving forward. So you, you create a, a link through, through that. And that's what kind of channeling is. Uh, so you just you become whoever is the channeler becomes the vessel to communicate through. So a lot of times you can hear the dialogue, or sometimes it's just a stream of thought forms that come through. Uh, some channelers actually actually uh, their voices change and and the way they uh, present themselves change because it takes on uh, the I can't say the form but sort of the energy of the channel that's coming through. Now. One of the, the, the challenging parts that have been because, I mean, I've heard of channeling for a long time. I've been exposed to some. I don't channel, uh, but I have had people that do channel <clears throat> that come to me and say, you know, uh, do you know if this channel is good or whatever it is? I mean, a channel is a channel, but at times it is the information coming through current. Is it uh, from a consciousness that understands the human experience? Is it a consciousness that is in a timeline of a probability that we're not even on, on board with any longer? <clears throat> is it a current one in an essence? Is it from a channel uh, of a consciousness that's coming from the past? You know, for example, some people will channel, say, Archangel Michael or Jesus or, you know, other um, so-called, whatever they want to call it, masters or whatever. Uh, and uh, at times, I've heard channeling that people have given me recordings of and so forth. And when you're tuning into it, when you're actually listening to it, you know that it's not one of current. It's one of the uh, other probabilities that have never really played out. At times, you get information that is uh, is of a timeline that really we're, we're not on. You know? So you have to actually use um, your discretion, first of all. Uh, the other thing is to not to get lost in it because, in essence, you don't want it to supersede your own knowing. You don't want to supersede your own uh, intuitiveness. So you can use it as part, bits and pieces to enhance some th certain things. That's fine. Um, but then you get, you know, people say, well, we have channels that are coming from a false light or whatever it is. And what that really represents is that it, you, you're tapping into an entity that uh, <clears throat> may say some nice things, may say some things you want to hear, may uh, share some content, but then some of the other content may not be in alignment with what's really taking place on the planet and so forth. A lot of times, you know, the channels may be uh, looking at something that we're not even there yet, so we may have to align accordingly if we make certain choices on a collective scale to go down that direction before something plays out. So there's a lot of version. That, it's, a, it's a big topic. It's very, you know, uh, mixed, you know. And uh, I know a lot of people have used channeling as their own guidance system. And uh, a lot of times it ends up leading them to a path that may, they may not be favorable at some point. Other times it's, it's very enlightening because they share some pretty high consciousness. Um, but again, you have to always relate it to how does it apply to our current situation on the planet and how does it benefit this information for us to know. Sometimes it becomes a distraction because, you know, what happens is it says, okay, well, such and such a thing is going to happen. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay, you know, or something of that nature or it gives you something of that nature. Then what happens is people sit back and say, oh, okay, then I'm just going to wait for that change to, or to occur. Well, ultimately, what happens is you're putting aside what you really have to do, which is basically create a shift within yourself, and then they turn around and say, well, it didn't happen, or the collective didn't happen. Well, if we all take a back seat and just wait for the changes to occur, I mean, we're perpetually moving forward with the changes, and we have to be participating. It's not about sitting in the sidelines and waiting for it to change before we can step in. And somebody says, well, why is my life not changing? Well, your life is being cued to change all the time or to create a... Uh, higher awareness um, shift within yourself, 
but you need to actually take action. Uh, and action could be just being tuned into that or start taking steps to adjust your thought patterns, letting go of things that don't serve you any longer, uh, be open to a higher state of consciousness or more information and things like that. And that means that you start to take an active role in creating this new world or going in alignment in a direction that we could possibly go. So, um, anyways, I, I'll let you guys ask the questions so I can fine-tune it because it's, it's, this is huge in a way <laughs> because of which direction we can go. Yeah, well, so is there a difference between a channeler and a median? Okay, um, what happens with a medium? Uh, they're, they're actually... They're inviting in certain uh, spirits or what you can call uh, uh, beings that are out of body. It could be a soul that was on the planet before uh, or, you know, like for example, a medium can bring in um, a loved one or something of that nature. They can bring in also uh, a soul that's been on the planet that is much more evolved and be able to, to, to do that. Uh, so it's, it has some similarities to it, but then when you're talking about channeling, now you're kind of opening the door to to all types of things. Because like, a medium will not channel a being, for example, or uh, an extraterrestrial, for example, from another planet, or another version of a, um, how could I call it, um, another another uh, parallel, parallel uh, version of, of a timeline of some sort, where a medium would be bringing in something that's either been here on the planet or something that uh, has worked with the planet and is usually in in vicinities uh, with working directly with, say, the individual that's a medium or the individuals that they're, the medium is working with. Um, so it is a little bit more specific compared to channeling because channeling, you, you basically can bring anything. Like uh, Daryl Ankara, I think is his name, um, he, sure. he channels a version of him 400 years in advance. Right, but in one of the probability timelines, it's not the exact timeline; it's a probability timeline. So, you know, you can, it, there's much more flexibility. You can bring something way in advance, or from a different timeline, a different uh, parallel world, and so forth. Where a medium would be more uh, what is current in in this um, playground. But then again, you're also exposed to all types of things. It can be high vibration, low vibration. I mean, it's uh, with good intention, maybe not so good intention. I mean, everything is good in a, in a form of experience, but do we take that information fully or not? You know. Yeah. So, well, it, it 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 makes me think about these people who are putting out all these predictions. You know, and you know, not to say that the predictions are wrong, but the time came and went, and their predictions weren't fulfilled. Now, were those predictions just fulfilled in the timeline in which they were channeling? Well. See, right now, there's a big difference that's occurred. Um, you'll notice that prior to the end of 2012, we had multiple timelines. And with these multiple timelines, they were kind of fixed timelines with a very little variability in, in them. So if somebody was looking at it and say, okay, I'm going to, it's like a track in music, okay? You're going to go on one track and you're going to get whatever notes of music is on that track. And if you go on another track, you get different, uh, different uh, sounds and so forth. So you're basically going from one timeline to the next and you can tap into... So if, we, if the collective, for example, if the collective goes to a certain state of consciousness or a certain vibration, we move to one particular timeline. With that particular timeline, there's markers. There's already pre-set events to occur at certain points and so if somebody's tuning into that and saying okay uh, based on where we're going right now uh, we have a high probability to hit this particular timeline then at that particular timeline what they're looking at is what would play out on that timeline however if, if it doesn't line up to that it doesn't work out now where we're at now is even much more variable and it's really hard to predict anything because in essence, we have no timelines. The timelines are collapsed. We basically have one wave of timeline, meaning that we are creating each moment um, by the, the very moment that you're living in. So your state of consciousness, the thought forms, your energy form, what is the collective doing, how they respond, and so forth, stages the next moment. So in essence, if you get somebody that's a medium or someone that can tune in, uh, say on a prediction for the planet, they can tune in 
and look at where we are vibrationally, where we are in the state of consciousness, and how all the instrumental components of all the playmates, uh, being either governmental, a corporation, uh, institutions, and the collective of people and, and areas, and say, okay, based on where we're at, and with these slight variations, this is what we can project at this point as something on this particular date and so forth. However, just that, letting you know that, already creates a variation. And then by a lot of other factors that may come in place will change, and of course, the pieces and components no longer fit in place and you don't have it. The other thing is there's an assumption that we will achieve a certain state of vibration and state of consciousness uh, by this date, then, of course, that particular uh, event would be in alignment and say, okay, that's going to play out because based on where we're going and all of this coming into place, we'll be in alignment. But, for example, if there is a deterrence of some sort that takes place or something changes and we don't get there, then it's delayed. So even if it was supposed to happen, say, the end of September, and then it doesn't happen, the end of September, because in essence, uh, we never got to that vibration or that state of consciousness as a collective to be able to be ready for it. For example, a lot of the changes that we're going to go from, you know, third to fourth and fifth dimensional consciousness, we're supposed to have certain dates, and, and those particular dates keep getting extended because of the fact that we're moving slower than we would anticipate. Plus, there's allowances made, made, made in them to allow other souls to catch up. So, for example... At one point, it said, okay, we're not, we're not concerned about how many souls are going to be ready, how many people are going to be ready for this. By this date, we're going to be in this dimension, consciousness, and we're going to cut off all the different codes. For example, we step into fourth dimensional consciousness, we're either going to support or not support third dimensional consciousness for the people that live on the planet. However, as we move forward, it's saying, well, you know, okay, at that time, we were only going to get a third. Well, a lot of stimulation came along uh, to help, so we have a higher probability, a higher chance to get more than a third. We're start looking at two-thirds. Maybe we should try to get more. So what it does is actually gives more stimulation but extends the date. So in excellence, the codes come in for the fourth and fifth, but it also remain, leaves some of the codes so that people that are in the third will not no longer be disconnected from the possibility of remaining on the planet. And it, it allows them to, to hold that older code and older vibration along with the newer vibration so that they both can coexist and give time for, for um, souls to, to move forward. So when people are saying predictions of actual events taking place, it's, that, it's very, very difficult to uh, predict. Now, the only thing you can say, you know, in a sense, and say, okay, there's a wave coming through, okay, and it's scheduled to come through. Those are a little bit more fixed. There's a variability on that too, but it seems to be a little bit more fixed saying, okay, uh, between the 8th of September, say, and the 28th, we have this wave of energy that will help people more lightly, more easily to see what's playing out in their programs and bring it up to the surface and, and be able to release it much easier than they have before. It's a supporting wave, so it comes in. But after the 28th, then we're going to have this heavier, denser energy coming through that is going to actually... Uh, you still there, Franco? No. Cannot hear you anymore. For a second. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. Um, anyways, um, I forgot what I was saying at that point because if it was rambling off and I think I didn't realize that you were there. But in a, in a sense where another wave comes in and how it's going to play out, that would kick in at that point in time. Uh, so, in essence, those are a little bit more firm than the actual what the event's going to be, like, for example, how the, the planet's going to respond. For example, you're saying, well, the financial thing is going to collapse, for example, or something of that nature. Well, there's been a lot of predictions of that, and there's been a lot of the times that, you know, have come and passed, or that we were going to have something like a huge solar flare, or we're going to have a you know, collision or something. I mean, there's a lot of been a lot of predictions, or something is going to happen. But 
those are hard to determine because, in essence, everything is changing all the time. There's a lot of different influences that come into play that will alter the, the potential path that something would go towards. So, in essence, uh, nothing is firm at this point for any particular event, you know, because it's constantly changing, constantly adjusting, and as a, of a, as a collective, uh, we're doing that, and then there's influences that are, you know, other uh, aspects of ourselves that are also um, working with us um, behind the scenes that are going in and altering, because, say, for example, let me give you an example. If a particular event has to occur, uh, sorry, uh, did you want to say something? Or? Oh, no, 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 I'm listening. Okay, okay. so say a particular, a particular event was to, to come forth. That would be somewhat like a 9-11. I'm just giving you that example. Another 9-11 of some sort of that nature. Uh, or you stimulate a, 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 you know, a war like uh, activity in, say, the United States, for example. As much as that may be a shake-up, as much as that would be probably a, a, a pretty powerful adjustment uh, that will occur and will stimulate um, either fear or something like that, as a group that is monitoring and working with us, it looks at, it says, okay, if we allow this particular event to take place, and it, what it does is creates a simulation, and that simulation that, are, that it creates is actually monitors what direction people will sway towards, meaning breaking a certain pattern and coming together and working together to make things better? Or are they going to go into a paralyzed fear state and then create complete anarchy uh, where people just go crazy all over the place and terrorize and do whatever because the fact that they're you know in survival mode or some sort. So it monitors if the vibration goes up or down a little fluctuation is no problem, but if it if it actually drops it, uh, then it doesn't doesn't uh, um, it doesn't benefit at this point in time. So, like for example, when the 9/11 happened, that was a you know pretty monumental uh, event for for the United States and 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 the other countries that were involved, with in essence to what it represented. So the vibration really uh, shifted and it dropped, but it was also a huge awakening at the same time. But if that was repeated now, uh, as an example of that nature, you will notice that it will not take the same effect because, in essence, uh, people are much more aware and they would dissect whatever is going on and yep. they would basically uh, narrow down who. Because at that point in time, everybody kind of fell into the, okay, there was the terrorists. <laughs> they did it. And it took some time later that people started to realize, wait a minute here, there's a lot of things that don't, don't jive here and a lot of things that don't make any sense. And, and then start realizing and they start analyzing, they start looking at how everything happened and then they start opening up this can and start noticing, hey, this is a false flag. And, uh, of course, uh, it changes everything at that point in time. Now, you can see any time there's, there's certain events that occur, like um, a mass shooting of some sort. Yeah. The, the ripple effect that it causes is very minimal and it's torn apart within minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the point is, oh, look at this, 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 this. And before you know, like the web has gone crazy because it, it has dissected it so, so deeply that in essence, you can see it. it's a false light and you would have to be completely in a sleep state to be able to not see it. So it's very different. So in situations of that nature, um, you know, there's a lot of variabilities of that. So when people say, well, we predict, you say, well, you can predict a possible probability or say a probability, but you have to look at the highest level of probability and, and it most likely cannot unfold the same way that you see it or even project it because there's so many variabilities, so many changes occurring. And we live in, in, at a time where everything is changing so fast in the, in a state of uh, fluctuation and also in a, in the state of consciousness and so forth that to replicate those timings could be it would be a really uh, a challenge to do so yeah so i want to i want to get this straight about the the whole timeline thing and, and the <laughs> different state that we're in now so what you're saying we had a a, a more um, i suppose more of a fixed state 
uh, and easier to predict sort of timelines that we were on prior to the 2012 event. Is that, is, am I catching this right? Correct, yes. We had fixed timelines at the time. Right. And depending on the timelines, the timelines had different outcomes, but it also had different sequence of events. And for example, if a lower vibration timeline, say for the collective consciousness was still very low, then you would have someone, say, maybe powerful natural disasters. You would have much more uh, chaotic events where people would go into a different state. But if your vibration is increasing, those timelines would be lighter. It would be more cooperative, more, you know, and, and depending. And there's many, many ranges of these timelines. So you have, because the timelines, if you understand, the timeline, you have personal timelines, you had personal timelines, and you had collective timelines. But then there's also the timeline of the solar system. You have a timeline uh, of the actual galaxy and so forth, because that's how it kind of was uh, all worked out. But now there's no timelines anywhere. Now, eventually, what, what was going on in the galaxy and the universe, those timelines faded a long time ago. But we still, in our system, had uh, still timelines, and now, of course, it's cleared out. So now we actually are free flow. So basically at this point in time, in, on a personal level, you can create anything you want moment by moment because that's all there is. There's only moments. There's only this moment. We don't have a past. There's, the past fades the moment you shift. The, the, past, the past is only a memory. And for us to experience the past, we have to recreate it by the memory. But you can't normally cannot go back to the same state of consciousness and vibration that originally created that that particular event. You can only adjust it enough to get close to it, but it's really difficult to go back to that point. And the future is basically based on where we are at now and what we want to create. But at that point in time, we would have to stay in a locked physical uh, frequency and state of consciousness to to play it out exactly how we would project it. So. Right now, it's just this moment, whatever you're gaining, whatever you're experiencing, whatever uh, is shifting within yourself, creates the next moment. And the next moment is being designed as you're living that one moment. So the next moment is now the next step, the stepping stone. So you're looking at a stepping stone that doesn't exist until you formulate the stepping stone. And the constructing material that's going to go into that step, uh, the next step is going to be based on what you have is resources. So the thing is, the purpose of all of that was for us to be able to create change a lot quicker and have, have no fixed, um, what do you call it, patterns or anything of that nature. So in essence, you make a discovery of some sort that's like an aha moment right now. It causes a huge ripple effect so that the next steps that are coming up are now going to use part of that aha moment to use that as a substance to create your next moment or your next uh, reality experience. So, and it's the same thing as on a collective scale that uh, saying for what the collective of the planet state of consciousness and their vibration is that will create where the planet would go. So somebody can be saying, oh, listen, California's going to go down into the Pacific and, you know, it's, it's gone and, and so forth by this date. And, and I think there's already several of those uh, predicted over the years and, yeah. and recently this year a couple of times, I think. But anyways, uh, but to, to do that, to even do that at that point in time, of course, the first part is, is it viable to do that? Second of all, what... Do we need to create to be that, uh, at that state to, to be able to make that happen? And on a collective scale, we weren't in, in, a, in a state of readiness to, to create something of that nature, so it wouldn't happen. Right. So when people would say, listen, uh, I, I just heard the prediction that such and such is going to take place, right? Uh, you can tune into it and you can move back and forth uh, and sense all the probabilities of energies where it's going and say, you know, it's very improbable for this to, to take place unless everything stays rigid and I don't see it rigidity. So you can kind of confirm that it's a possibility or not much easier than you can say it's going to happen on that day or it's going to happen at all. Right, right. Sounds like it, it seems like uh, uh, the ball has been put in our court more firmly than it was prior to 2012. Correct, correct. And because to stimulate uh, more rapid change, uh, the thing is, 
this a lot of these changes you know there was um, a construct of this shift of the planet to take place and our within our solar system and galaxy however it was never never outlined accurately how it was going to take place because depending on how things moved because we're not, you know, we're not the only ones in the driver's seat here because we do have our brother, sister souls from other planets and so forth that have taken a great interest in our working with us. Uh, when I say with us on, at a soul level, uh, at a higher aspect, saying, okay, let's, let's navigate this, this way. And they use their ingenuity and, and our experience and so forth to say, okay, how can we construct a path where we continue to shift and get caught up in an alignment with the rest of the galaxy because we were kind of quarantined for a very long time as an experiment to go down a certain path where there was accentuated polarity and we were still operating in a very outdated operating system where there was still survival of, you know, suffering and, you know, killing, destroying, this and that, very violent energy, very unnatural energy. Uh, so it was like, okay, let's see what happens if we let it go. But we're going to disconnect it from the galaxy at this point in time uh, and quarantine it so that we're not affected by the, the different uh, impulses of energy that they're uh, running through when they're still very polarized and very negative. So we don't want to be engaged in having that uploaded into our main frame or what we call our, the galactic uh, or at least the quadrant of our galactic uh, that type of energy, that type of consciousness, uh, because that's, we're going to leave it there. We're going to bring it in after we, um, we have it filtered through and, and use only the, the gem of, of it, but we're not going to bring that, that information in or that state of consciousness in on a galactic. So now it's been brought in. So we're back reconnected uh, to, um, to the galactic, but it, at the same time, it's been monitoring. And, and I think we talked about it last time because... Um, we're allowed to go as far as we want to go uh, to, with a limit and uh, saying, well, okay, if we're going to create an environment where we're going to spread a virus and wipe out 75% of the population or something of that nature, that's not acceptable. And that will create such a, a pulse that is not uh, acceptable and will retard the, the, the progress. And that is, you know, things have changed so they can't happen or that, you know, trigger a nuclear, uh, nuclear war or something like that. Uh, no, that's not acceptable. So it, most of uh, of those activities are usually um, altered or not allowed to, to take place. So there's certain things are affected, so it doesn't take take place. Yeah, those that that sort of thing's been very obvious in our past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Well, I want to take it back to the channeling thing. Um, and uh, uh, what about? Um, Channeling in religion. I mean, is 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 there are there are you aware of any examples of channeling within any of the religious texts or within any religions that are out there? Well, a lot of the so-called channeling that has occurred in religion, um, those were channelings from a long time ago, and of course they were documented at the time. Now. When we say channeling, um, in those days, it's basically someone would receive some information. They would receive, you know, information with the belief there was a god or a deity of some sort that was giving them that, that information, and also giving certain predictions and so forth. Now, you have to understand the people that were receiving that information were in a very low state of consciousness and very, low, very uh, unaware, if you want to call it that. But so they would interpret it the way the information would come through. But those were at times when you, any of those information that came, a lot of it were coming from beings of a lower state of consciousness because there was no deity that said, okay, this is what's going to happen. Because a lot of the religions, most of all religions, if all, uh, at this point in time, uh, were governed by various deities or various, uh, I guess, not really deities, but beings of some sort that, uh, you know, relate certain information. So they would you know, predicts a lot of things of this Armageddon or, you know, the end of the world or, you know, the coming of, the, you know, Christ or, or the Buddha or something of that nature, you know, different, different uh, uh, information that would, was uh, received pretty, uh, pretty well. 
And a lot of, they used to say it was in a dream state. Sometimes they would go into a dream state and they would receive this information and they were documented. And because the information was so far-fetched compared to it and had such an authoritative tone to it, then they were able to say, oh, okay, this is coming from a higher order and it's, you know, whatever it is. So they would, you know, document it. But then the document had to go through interpretation and along the way it would be changed because if certain people or certain other information would come along and say, okay, let's make it, you know, much more scary, much more this or whatever it may be. So when people were saying, you know, well, coming to 2012 or, or at different times that, you know, uh, the revelation would unfold, you know, and all these end times and all the stuff were coming along. Those were very different timelines, very different state of consciousness. That was before anything had really started to alter. Uh, this is the reason why most of those things never happened pretty well. Uh, there was some earlier. There was different predictions that had occurred or different information given when really there was minuscule changes in the collective at that time because humanity was not really moving forward. So the timeline was pretty well fixed. So you could say anything on a timeline because basically if you put up even a belief at that time, they wouldn't. No, there was no questioning because there was not um, the capacity to even think outside of what you were just told. You would have certain outcomes. So a lot of the predictions, at, uh, you know, thousands of years ago were coming, you know, in flourishion. But when they started getting closer to the 20th century, 21st century, if you want to call it that. Uh, of course, the, there was a tremendous amount more changes going on, and then the alignments of certain things started to become uh, less and less uh, in alignment or less and less probability to, to take place because things were changing. Everything started to fluctuate, and consciousness was fluctuating. People were fluctuating. So at that point, it, um, you'll notice that a lot of the different predictions uh, started to, uh, you know, uh, as much as they were there, uh, wouldn't uh, come through. So the, a lot of the different channeling, but then the challenge, uh, cha when, you, when you're looking at certain religions and so forth, when they were receiving information, for example, some of the religions that started off, like, uh, you know, uh, Scientology and all the other ones, uh, depending on, on, on that or the Mormons or whatever, maybe, uh, you know, the Catholic, you, you name it, it, they're all, you know, one way or another they would receive information from uh, sometimes entities, sometimes they would receive it from from uh, various, um, how can you call it, but uh, beings and so forth, uh, which you know may have had the intention to just create more havoc or create another set level of separation. And then the, the, the person receiving it uh, felt you know a rush or energy of some sort and say, oh, this must be you know a higher a guidance, a higher source coming through at this point in time. And voila, they start putting together an organization and, you know, they have a new religion coming along with their interpretation, their spin of how things uh, work or even their understanding uh, based on what comes through. Um, so if you have to look at it, I mean, all religions are based on old information. They're based on a very, um, a very old operating system where we basically uh, projected separation. It's not about, you know, our true nature of being one, working together, creating a harmonious life. It just continues to judge, separate, and whatever else. And then, of course, you categorize and say, okay, this is this is what what we believe. And you can't question this. This is what we believe. Right. And it comes a dogma. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And you can't. You can't question it because then you're not, you're not one of them, and then you get kind of booted out, I guess, at some point. Right. So you got to you got to <laughs> Well, yeah, then then of course the, the the best part is then you you create another fictional uh, entity and saying, "Okay, there's a devil and if you don't follow the rules, um, cuz I, I know some of the religions because my family's been involved in religions and some and, you know some of the stuff that I used to hear that they um, you know would uh, talk about and and the moment you spoke outside of their belief system for example, you started to question something or you said something. The automatic thing that came out is saying, "Oh, you're being you're being uh, played by Satan." Right. You know? mm -hmm. Right. The boogeyman. Right. Right. Like, right. Or that you know you said something and you're now going to go to this uh, fiery pit or you're going to be something. Like that. You know, there's a lot of different uh, things that were coming up on, on that, right? And if you're gullible enough, and when I say gullible, you're just in a state of consciousness where you can't question it and you don't have that. Uh, inner uh, part of you active enough because you're you've 
kind of squashed it with with your own inner knowing because of the fact of you know taking on a lot of beliefs you, you don't you, you don't dare to question you know and I, I have family members that continue going to church and doing whatever it is they don't they're not that that deva- devoted if you want to say that but they're so afraid to to go out the box because right. you never know right. you know I, I may die and I may uh, turn out to be in hell somewhere. My, my father was the same way, because my father was not really a very religious man by any means. But, for, but he would go to church every single Sunday, and he would just go just so that he at least put in... That insurance policy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, 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 you know, the, re- the reason I ask that question about channeling and religion is because um, outside of religion, it seems like... Uh, seems like channeling or what we're calling channeling is a pretty recent phenomenon on the planet unless uh, it's been widespread and uh, been pretty much uh, uh, squashed and, and kept at bay and under the covers, so to say, by that religion, by the religions, which is very probable uh, if it has been something that's been going on throughout history. It has, it has. It's just at that point in time, it... Um it wasn't so. It didn't. They didn't call it channeling. They would just say that uh, a, a deity of some sort had passed on this information, and they would document the information. So, because if you look at it, you know, even if you look at a lot of the scriptures, they're handed down information from a source of wisdom, and they that's what they call it, classified it as wisdom because of the fact it was outside of their uh, level of understanding. And then there was always usually instructions of how to live and how to do things and what is right and what's wrong and so forth. So. To them, it, they always referred it to a deity more than just any time of channeling. But when you look at the information, you can tell that it's, you know, a lot of the information is coming from various resources that are, uh, you know, not from, let's say, a higher consciousness of time. So a higher maybe than where we were at, but what's the intention and so forth. Now it's much more public because there's more of it around. And... Uh, and we've kind of opened up a box in a sense where, you know, I've seen people that, you know, are so hooked on the idea, I want to channel, I want to channel, I want to channel. So they, they create an opening for channeling. But what I've noticed is a lot of them that are so eager to channel something outside of them are the ones that usually channel something that of a, of a, a lower consciousness or a lower vibration. Right. And uh, then you then you start going down some pretty rosy path, you know, colorful path. Let's call it that. Is the is the receiver limited, or is the information that comes through a receiver limited to that receiver's uh, experience and and their vocabulary? Yes, um, depending on the state of consciousness of the receiver. Uh, first of all, the information can be. Uh, interpreted a certain way the second is is if they're in a lower state of consciousness they're not going to receive very high high consciousness information uh and then they're usually much easier to take something that is uh less than uh a highest uh state of consciousness so someone that is much more enlightened or much more awakened and is much more in tune with themselves there the, the channels usually that come through a little bit of uh, higher quality, and then um, they actually don't add too much interpretation, especially if someone is not playing with too much ego, will not put too much interpretation, because if there's a judgment uh, and so forth, then they may feel superior and they may want to alter it some way. But in essence, uh, depending on the state of consciousness of the receiver, the information will also carry a certain tone or a certain uh, message or a certain uh, level of consciousness that would be shared. So it does, yes, absolutely it does affect um, uh, the, the message and what comes through and how it's even interpreted and how it's actually shared and then the language that is used by the, the various recipients. Hey, Franco. So uh, <clears throat> so for me, I, I like to call to the, a, a higher aspect of myself, a more perfected aspect of, of myself to uh to ask questions to you know so i'm very direct on on who i'm asking questions to you know mm-hmm. so, so and 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 when 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 i do that you know sometimes stuff comes through sometimes it doesn't you know I, well eventually it comes through in one way shape or form you know but not you know necessarily right on the right in the moment but would you would you consider that channeling even though you're 
just reconnecting with yourself? No, no, that wouldn't be channeling because what you're doing is you're tapping in and communicating with another version or another aspect of yourself. For example, we, you know, a lot of times you say, well, we want to connect with our higher self. Well, there's many levels of higher self that you want to connect with, you can connect with. You can connect with your soul, that's your first level of higher self. Now, the soul, the wisdom of the soul is basically it source itself with veils. But the wisdom of the soul would be the wisdom of all the many, many lives of experiences and different connections of being in form and out of form and also being on other planets. And not all souls have been on, you know, uh, as... Um, as varied in, in, in the amount of planets they go on and so forth. So you're tapping into that. Now, the next level, you can also tap into your twin soul, which is basically your other half, because the, the two, and I think we've talked about this before, where you have two souls with identical signature, but they've had different experience. So you can tap into that experience, uh, tap into that other soul and say, okay, uh, these are certain exp- uh, experiences that is taking place. What can you share for me? Uh, that you've gained from your journeys of being in and out. And at times, those, your twin soul might be off planet and it does not have the same, um, uh, viewpoint as being in a physicality at that point. So they may be able to access something more. So those are the first two. But then you can go to your soul family or what you can call, um, your oversoul. Now the next, that particular higher aspect of yourself is made up of, say now, 23. Uh, souls and the cluster of all information around that you can go there you can go to the next level which would be the next over level of oversoul which would be even grander which would be 47 uh, uh, souls worth of connection and and those souls will vary because they may be experiences from other planets experiences so you can tap into different uh, and then the one you're going to tap into when you're asking the question saying well okay I'd like to tap into my highest aspect of myself. Usually, the highest aspect of yourself will depend on what state you're in yourself. Because it's like this. I can go on to source consciousness because you have access to source consciousness. You have access to galactic consciousness, a universal consciousness. You have uh, the different layers and levels of uh, over souls, right? Or different clusters of souls. But you to get something directly from the highest would be quite mind-boggling when it comes to trying, because your mind might not be able to accept it, you wouldn't be able to understand. So when you say, I want my highest, you're going to get the highest that is going to be best aligned with what you're really requesting or wanting to experience. Through. Following the intention. Yes, correct. Now, what's the difference, uh, what's the spirit guide and and, and how do you communicate consciously with a spirit guide? What does that look like? Okay, so then you you have, of course, you can guide, connect with your spirit guides because what happens is we have angelic realms and stuff like that, but we have guides, okay? So what happens is not, not all souls, because the spirit guide is basically another soul, but it's not in human form. There are souls that have had lives and on different planets or this planet and so forth. But then they choose for a period of time, uh, could be for some time, saying, well, I'm not going to incarnate. However, I'm going to work with other souls that are uh, that are in, uh, in physical form, that have projected a holographic experience in a physical form. I will work with them. And they will work with sometimes two, three, four different uh, people. And usually they work with the ones that they align best with, because in essence they'll find the ones that they feel most connected to because they're at a, you know, I wouldn't say similar, but a close vibrational state of consciousness, for example. So when you're tapping into your guides, now you're getting a perspective of an overview, right? So you're not, you're not getting a perspective of, oh, I'm in a body and I'm going through all this stuff here right now, but they're, they have an overview, so they're looking at it. It's like, for example, the example, you have somebody playing baseball. Just a simple example, uh, analogy. Uh, someone's playing baseball. So the guy, the, the batter, he sees what's on the field. Okay, he sees the pitcher ahead of him. He knows the catcher's in the back. He knows where all the people are positioned. But his viewpoint is is involved in. I got to hit that ball, and he's trying to plan where he's going. 
you take somebody from the audience and he has a whole view of where everybody is and they can actually see people moving around and what, you know, the thing, but it's not engaged in the game the same way as I'm going to hit that ball. We'll be able to say, listen, you know, there's an opening on the left side there. If you hit the ball slightly in that angle, you have a better chance to get right through because those other players are quite a distance and they may not be able to get there. Uh, and and not so concerned with the same uh, experience because I got to hit the ball. I got to hit the ball. So the view ball. So when you're tapping into your guides, they would give you a bigger perspective, a viewpoint with a, above beyond the mind because the mind becomes a huge filter, and they will share information for you. Now the one thing that they do is a spirit guide will like to assist you and is there to assist you, but at the same time does not want to influence your experience in, in a way where if you have to learn something through hard knocks, for example, I'm just giving you an example, or you need to go through a challenging experience, they're not going to give you the solution. They may say, you have the option to do this, this, and this, and you don't have to go there, but if, if the mind is so locked in that, you know, I'm not going to shift unless, type of thing, and then they're not going to interfere and say, Oh, you know, forget about going down that path because you're gonna get you're gonna get your ass kicked or something like that. It's gonna look at it and say, okay, based on where that that person needs to go to make a shift in them, they're gonna have to get their ass kicked. So, uh, yeah, just stay on that path, whatever. And then then uh, you know, sometimes people say, well, our spirit guide gave me a a bad uh, bad direction or something of that nature. Say, well, you know, why did I get my ass kicked over here? Well. <laughs> It's what you needed because that's the only way you can create a shift within your consciousness or your mind, really, at that point. So spirit guides, we have, you know, we could have one, we can have two, three, depending what serves you. Of course, as you get conscious, more conscious, as your vibration goes up, your spirit guides change because you'll get much more advanced ones and you will be able to get even more information, more guidance along the way. They're rooting for you, they're supporting you, but they're not going to interfere. And so... At times, you know, your spirit guide will, will be able to give you certain information. Other times, uh, you, you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt because you'll say, okay, well, how, uh, thanks for the information. Now, how does it, how can I utilize it in my particular experience fully, uh, and, and gain whatever I need to gain? So when communicating with your spirit guide, would that be considered channeling or mediumship? That would be more mediumship, That's, and you can yeah. do that on yourself, yes. Yeah. You can bring it in. You can tune into it and say, okay, I asked my guide for assistance, so you can ask. So that would be more mediumship, yes. Hmm. Channeling is basically when a, a being communicates through you and will channel information from, from whatever source. And uh, it can be anywhere, anything. And uh, a lot of times the channeling actually takes over so that the, the mind is actually just becomes the recipient of the information and then transcribes the information or, or you know, vocalizes the, the, the information. So, so if you go into, if, so if you go into this with the intention of channeling, you know, only the highest and best positive entities, so to mm -hmm. speak, right? With, yes, with, with, with that intention, will, is that only, is that what's only going to be able to allow to become, to, to come through? If you place that intention with an absolute certainty and you're in a, a very high vibrational state where you're not having any fear, uh, then yes. And if you find something coming through that doesn't resonate or doesn't uh, have that vibration, you will sense it right away. But if you're going in and you're going in a state where I need help and I'm in survival mode or something like that and I need guidance and you're now channeling you know, uh, and you're afraid, you have a fear, your vibration is very low, so you're you're kind of going to get anything. You can get anything. Or and you're it's the best and highest good. Oh God, please don't fall on me. Yeah, and the high, <laughs> the best and highest good could yeah. be uh, giving you, you know, information that will get you down a certain path, and that path could be very colorful. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's not only the intent; it's how how you feel uh, about it. So in essence, if you're not going in, oh help me, help me, help me, uh, you know, state and say, okay, listen, this is where I'm at. I'd like to have a bigger perspective of this and see how I can actually maneuver through this. So I'm asking for my highest form of guidance that I can receive or the highest good to support me at this time with my intention to move forward for the betterment of myself and mankind. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a big key, the, the state of being and 
the uh, intention um, must be coupled to be really successful. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So do you think that there's people walking around now that are, that, that are unconsciously channeling while, while conscious? So like, you know, uh, example, like people with a, a schizophrenia, you know, who are hearing these voices in their head. Do you think that they're just, you know, something about them is wide open and they're just, you know, they, they haven't been taught to control the voices or to stop the voices or, you know, what, what's, your, what's your outlook on that? Yes, in, in a situation like that, what happens? Um, you'll notice that anybody that has schizophrenic has gone through some traumatic state of experience to the point where they may not want to, the mind itself saying, listen, I, know I can't handle this, I can't navigate this, like, I want out of here, type of thing. And this is coming from a very strong state of mind. Or they're going through some very traumatic states or experiences where they're kind of shutting themselves down. And they're, all, they're almost pretty well opening themselves to invite any energies come through. So at that point in time, you can have fragmented souls come in and where, you know, they've left a, a certain lineage uh, or connection to the planet. Or you can get entities coming through. Uh, these are entities are old uh, pockets of consciousness and energies that are still residing on the planet. And, you know, and then they create a link. So they're actually creating a new channel. So now you have... You know, it's like you're on a radio station, but the radio station has the capacity to turn on to two channels and then maybe three channels or four channels. So now you have four different sources, and this is why they would hear these voices coming into, into the head. Now, because they're in such a low state, most of the time the, the entities or energies that they're channeling uh, or consciousness they're channeling are usually very low vibration uh, coming through. So they're not going to give them very good information. They're going to give them information to say, hey, jump off the building, or you can yeah. fly, and you can do this, and it, and it just taunts them to to try different things without any consideration that, you know, if we try to jump, and we still live in the law of gravity here, uh, uh, where we're projected, you may break a few bones or something like that, or if you do this or that, or, you know, give instructions to act a certain way with people or whatever. So you're going to have a lot of that. Uh, yeah. So... That's one level of schizophrenia. The other level of schizophrenic would be a fragmentation of the ego, which basically the ego creates two separate entities or identities. Let's call it that, identities. And the, the second one or the third one that it, it creates is an altered identity that will be able to cope with a certain scenario or situation. For example, so if somebody's going through a traumatic situation, it creates a version of themselves uh, egotistic or ego version of self that is probably very mean and very uh, tough and, and so forth so that it would not be subject to that other. So you may have somebody, one entity, uh, sorry, one, uh, one fragmented part of the ego acting one way and seeming meek and seeming, you know, uh, victimized or as a victim, and then the next one may be a victimizer or something like that or much more... Uh, prevalent in being firm or strong or, you know, violent, if you want to call it that. It can, it can take a lot of different uh, points. So it actually keeps itself um, busy by moving from one to the other, so it doesn't have to face its current reality, and it just fragments its reality. So that's the other option or the other way that uh, which we, they determine as schizophrenic or pi uh, bipolar, yeah. the word, yes, is... Um, is one way. So that, that's usually that's the case. But when, when you're talking about strong voices and you're going into, uh, you know, very erratic shifts from one to the other, a lot of times what they've done is actually uh, invited other entities to uh, come in. I've worked with many that have taken them in. And usually when I see them, it's uh, either through childhood or some point in their time, they just couldn't cope with what was there going. They, they kind of say, come on, somebody take over. And then it opens up to an entity that comes in and says, oh, I can take care of that, and I, I am like a brute, and I can do whatever. So, but then when they're in there at times, when, when they're connected, it's almost like they're linking and they're having this information, even though they're not totally always in their body. A lot of times they, you know, the consciousness becomes an energy field that the body adopts. Then uh, at that point in time, uh, when, whenever that one steps in, uh, the whole, not only the personality changes, but even their energy changes. Uh, they've actually documented where certain people 
uh, you know, one version of them has cancer, and when it shifts to the other version, there's no signs of cancer at all, because it <laughs> alters the whole physiology. It changes basically the whole holographic uh, projection. Wow, that's crazy. You know, you know, we're we're, we're wrapping up this hour now, but uh, you know, sometimes, <clears throat> you know, you 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 go into a store sometimes, and you you know, got, you got the homeless people sitting outside, and they're just you know just ranting and talking and carrying on. And there's been times where I've stopped, you know, n not in in their in their in their in their um, um, sight line of me, but you know, stopped around the corner a little bit, you know, and just listen to the shit that 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 comes out of their mouth. And man, I'm telling you, like the craziest things come out sometimes, and then it's just like, you know, four or five sentence sentences of just pure knowledge. Like, how did this how did this crazy ass guy screaming at the air come up with this good with with this good stuff? And then it goes right back to some old crazy stuff too, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's definitely really. Well, I, I I've come across situations, well, sim very similar stuff, you know, what we perceive as the homeless guy on the street. Yeah. Uh, that will be sitting there mumbling to themselves, and then as I walk by, they'll say something that's profound to me. Mm -hmm. That 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 I know one of the, my guides, one of my connections out there just slipped a message through an open channel. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because that, that's exactly what happens. It's at times because they become, because they have opened themselves up and they've had a lot of different uh, uh, channels come through that uh, you might be walking there and say, oh, okay, great, I can have the message come for this one because I can access that right away. It's right. kind of an open platform. Bang, you get your message. Yeah. All right, so we are at top of the hour, Franco, and uh, how can people get a hold of you, and, and what's going on? What do, you, what do you got going on up there in Canada now? Well, we're, uh, we don't have any major activities coming up at this point in time. Uh, we're still scheduling some new stuff coming on. We've, we've just finished a couple of retreats, and we had, uh, well, actually, yeah, since we've talked, we've had a couple of retreats, and we've had other events, but we haven't scheduled anything firm yet. Uh, but if you uh, go on my website, francodinicola.com, and you register uh, there, there's, uh, you just uh, join the, the group, you will get notification of events coming up. And uh, Because we do a lot of radio shows like yourself, and we do programs. I know we have a couple of things coming up at the end of the month, uh, which will be online, uh, which will be posted as soon as we have everything firmed up on our website, but if you go on our mailing list, if you register on my, our mailing list just by going on our website, and it's just on the right-hand side, you will get notification of upcoming events. And, and because a lot of it is online, uh, it doesn't matter where you live in the world, you'll be able to do it. And, of course, we, once it's recorded, it's there for replays too. Uh, if you go on our web, my website, there's a lot of resources there uh, for various topics and various uh, which are talks and, and uh, sometimes there are, there are also videos and so forth, processes and things like that. We make it as possible, best as possible to assist people through this beautiful journey that we're going through right now. And a lot of people do have challenges at times. So I, I like to provide materials to, um, to facilitate them. You're doing a great job of it, too. So, yeah, good stuff. All right, so if you're out there listening on one of the other media formats, uh, iTunes, the Vimos, the YouTubes, or wherever this audio happened to land, and you want to check out the rest of the show, go on over to www.the100thmonkeyradio.com where you're going to find six years of shows and archives and all sorts of goodies over there. So We will see you guys in Hour 2. Condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. Change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. How do you wash your sweet potato? Ah, we missed that one for a while. All right, guys. We'll see you in hour two.
in the average you see. Please give me your break, man. Let me be me so I can be free. To do what I please, see what I see, be who I be. From the brain, even when I start to enter The beats I'm bending, the vibes I'm sending It's pleasure, never better Even though shit is a mess I never stress in touch with insight Therefore I'm blessed with the armor Tell your mama, but kill the drama Wake up! If you're not a thing, press the 